Hello there and welcome back to another Lego Ideas video. As you saw in the thumbnail there is going to be a few different sort of projects and different contests that I'll be going over. The votes are in, the expert review has now finished for the Polaroid and begins for exploring the cosmos. So I do have five projects in the upcoming one. I'll be going over them because eventually it does get to a fan vote which I will need your support for. Keep an eye out in the community post and I'll probably whack a short out about it around the time that you can vote. So do keep an eye out for that. Thank you to everyone who has supported me on all my projects for ideas. We'll get to the hand and also talk about a brand new entry for a new contest. So let's first begin with my mannequin hand which if you don't know there are three variants. Originally, I was sat at my desk one day and wanted to make a ring holder to hold my jewellery, which would keep my rings off my desk when I'm building Lego, and I tend to just wear them now anyway. But it was a problem that I created a solution for out of Lego, really cool, decided to add it to Lego Ideas. I think it was my second entry after the contest last year for 15 years, I made a few massive 15 builds. And if you saw that and are still sticking around, thank you very much for your support. But the first one did quite well. It shocked me that I got 37 supporters, which is a third of the way to the first milestone, which was crazy for me at the time. I don't think I got this much support on my 15. So to get it on a product idea rather than a contest was really neat. So I decided to upgrade it. First one's looking a bit... A bit like a first draft of a design. So I went with a much more sleeker smoothed out told off the whole palm of the hand and added these nice white chocolate buttons which is definitely what they remind me of to the front of the fingers and just made it look a bit more presentable added a really cool base to the bottom and that ended up with 60 supporters so okay we are now two-thirds of the way there so i revisited my the purpose of my hand, I had a few comments saying it would be great for ASL. I also had one that said it would be great as a Lego prosthetic, which I am still working on. Hopefully I can bring that idea around next year, dependent how well this hand does. I mean, the third version of the hand might still be here next year, and we'll get to that in just a second. 60 supporters was amazing, and we reached out in 60 days. That's a supporter a day, so by the time I managed to do the third one, you can see it's a completely overhauled design. I mean, the shape is roughly the same, but I completely changed up how the thumb is joined, and that is so that I could do every letter of the ASL alphabet. The American Sign Language alphabet, as you can see, L, E, G, and O were the four images I used. And so far, this is on 89 supporters in, what, 12, 13 days? And I am recording this yesterday. So hopefully by the time this video is out, we will have at least come that much more closer to 100 supporters. It's crazy to think that in about four months, this hand has gone from this first copy here, which was a ring holder to keep my rings off the desk. I really didn't think that I'd ever really see this again. I mean, I probably did break it up when I started using it. And now I've got this hand, which I do still have built. And as you can see, I still have it here and it is just become a part of my display. I am so proud of how well this hand has done already. And if we take a look at the statistics tab, I believe that tells us the milestones. It does indeed. So when we hit 100 supporters, not only do we have 40 whatever days are left, we actually gain a full year to hit the next milestone, which is very nice of LEGO to do. They could have just given us 60 days to hit 10k, but I don't think anyone's hitting that. And on top of this full year, that is just to hit 1,000 supporters, which, I mean, if you can hit 100 in 60 days, I guess it's asking you to hit 9 times that in 5 times. The days which hopefully we will then hit the next step for anyone interested is you get half a year to hit 5,000 then another half of the year to hit the 10k landmark once you hit 10k you enter into a pool of other submissions which there has been a new pool that i don't think i've shown off yet so i'm pretty sure i haven't shown this off in my last lego ideas video i think it was just before this was all announced so these are the 42 new images. There's a few really cool ones. I'm not sure if they showcase. They do showcase a few of them in this article. 
But there are some really good ones. I'm pretty sure there are probably a few Taylor Swift houses which again have still made it through. If Lego don't eventually just make one I would be very surprised. It goes into the pool with all the others from that quarter of the year and they pick one or two. They pick a few of them to become an actual set and with the success of Lego's browse sets I really think releasing an ASL hand or any sort of sign language help would be really cool. They've already done so much work on their website, creating videos to help people learn, having a set that they can actually push out to not only fans of Lego, but schools and other places to help teach children, even parents just being able to pick up a set that will teach themselves and their children sign language. I think that would just be amazing. There's actually another sign language set that's just recently hit 1K that I am a big supporter of. And I'd just love to see LEGO release something along this line sometime soon. But of course, that is not the only reason why we're here. you got to stay to the end to see them Polaroid results, which did come out probably about an hour ago, which was really great because I expected to be recording that section later. So we can get straight to that at the end of this video. But exploring the cosmos today enters the expert review, which would have been yesterday for you all at home but i do have five entries into this and if we take a look at my profile which is linked in the description you can see that amongst all other links i now have an amazon affiliate which is amazing so if you're ordering lego through amazon be sure to check that out the link in the description takes you straight through to the lego storefront and you can't be disappointed with anything you buy off that so thank you so much for your support on all of the platforms the first cosmos project that i have is honestly probably my favorite. I'm pretty sure this was the first one I revealed and it was one of the last ones I actually made. So it definitely deserved to be the first one out because it resembles the classic space logo. But what you might not see is there is a baby red spaceman. We're getting blue, we're getting white, we're apparently getting a pink one. It'd be great to get a red one in a set like this. I believe the whole premise of this contest is actually to be released as a gift with purchase later in the year. So it's a great display model. It sort of takes inspiration from not only the classic space logo, but also the Death Star we got last year, which is really cool. If we could get something like this, I think Lego would probably have to remake this whole angle bit. So it might not be the best of sets, but something on a display scale like this, a yellow planet, with a rocket going around, another baby spaceman. I just really want a whole collection of baby spacemen. I mean, we've got, what, like 10, 12 different colours, and we've only just got the second colour of the baby spaceman. So we want more baby space people, and this would be a great way to get them. I do have four others. This one takes inspiration from an old gift we purchased. I'll whack it on screen for you now. And as you can see, the spaceman that grew up dreaming of space, that was building them cardboard spaceships, now has his own spaceship. He's got a new cat to travel with him as his co-pilot. And we've upgraded that teddy bear mech to actually work in space. So it's really cool. Perhaps he's got an AI planted in the bear. And I definitely had to take inspiration from that set. And there is a set that is, again, similar to it. A different take on growing up and dreaming of space. But we'll get to that in a minute. Because first we've got ground control. You can see the red spaceman here is... Going to a yellow planet, perhaps, you can see the space explorers on it, and there's some sort of aliens abducting something off that planet. But the person at the base is sleeping, they've dozed off reading a book, and unable to help. I thought this was a great story to tell through it. The screens are created in that one brick, or I guess two bricks if you include the glass panel on the front, and it's a really interesting design, really neat set, and again, all of these are great gift with purchase that personally I would spend money on Lego just to get. So the other set that is somewhat similar to the cardboard spaceship gift with purchase we got is this blanket fort which was one of my favourite things. I never really built things out of cardboard boxes because there wasn't necessarily too much room with all the drawers and the units around but one thing I definitely did was find anything I could to pin down some blankets and as you can see, we've got a pile of pillars on the floor used to grab all the spare pillars, any cuddlies to pile up the blankets. We've even got a small error on the other side. The errors that folded out and were sort of three sections that folded out were the best because you could fully just have half a blanket fault just with a blanket over an error. 
There's a blanket going to the desk, which is being held down, and there's even one going to the bed, which, as you can see in a few of the other images, if you do decide to check them out, the bed has been stripped of pillars of blankets, and you've got the little space people out in all their different colours, some ships that are probably hung from the blankets on top. There is a lamp that is holding up all of the blankets in the middle, some hinge work to get them at that angle, and we've got a few stickered posters on the kids' wall. In their spacesuit with their favourite t-shirt on and a helmet that's probably a replica that they bought. And as you can see, there is of course a teddy bear. We have to include a teddy bear with these because everyone has a favourite childhood plush of some sort. In fact, I've still got mine just above the bed. So it just goes to show that you never really grow up. Now the final one is, no, this was the first one that I revealed. I think I got them in the opposite order. I saved the best till last. I really can't remember, it was so long ago, and of course I've had many new ideas since then, but the first one was the Spaceship Eparator, the SS Separator, which took a lot of references and was based around the brick separator that we see in so many different LEGO sets. As you can see, if I was to hold it up, you can sort of see the similarity between the two, and I just really like where people take any household object and be it a pair of scissors and turn it into a spaceship. So this is what my aim was to do with the Lego brick separator. I think I've done an amazing job. The slopes did take me quite a while, but I definitely think it was worth it. And I'm happy with the way this turned out. And all five of these are currently up. You can go check them out. But as we said, the crowd vote begins February the 28th. So there'll be another community post just letting you know that the crowd vote is open. And if you do have a Lego account, you can access Lego Ideas. It's the same account now, which is so great. Ever since they switched from VIP to Insiders, they sort of combined all your Lego accounts under the one umbrella, which is so much easier instead of logging on to all of these with a different account. And it just makes sense now that Lego have switched to the different service. But the brand new contest that's started a while back february 1st so it's taken me a few weeks to get this project out but of course i've also had the other space ones that i was making at the start of february is create your own exhibition if you've seen the lego insiders museum and i'm sure you have by now then you'll know it's a great set it comes with some interesting themes i think it already covers space dinosaurs and pirates i think there's also a castle section in there and there's some different wars and bits around i don't think i'm missing any i might be missing some but this contest asks you to create your own exhibit for the museum as an extension or just as a standalone it doesn't have to be related to this set in any means and you can actually revisit there are a few different dinosaur builds and that that i have seen that have taken a different dinosaur or even gone to the start of the exhibit in the excavating the skeleton and all that now i do have a gift shop which personally i think is the best exhibit of a museum i'd always be most excited for a gift shop and i don't think honestly that's really changed i've just brought up my excitement about everything else when we go to museums even zoos i just love going to the gift shop you could take a little bit of the zoo take a bit of the museum home with you and I honestly think it is one of the best. I mean, if a museum didn't have a gift shop, it would make the ending less excitable. I guess it just gives a nice end to what otherwise I'm sure is a great day. I have definitely taken inspiration from the museum. Now, it has been initially rejected. It's still waiting approval. But I do have to say on video, the ideas team has definitely improved how they moderate images and mainly the feedback they send back before they just send you a list of things that it could be too blurry too dark but now not only do they bold the actual problem with your set so say the images are too blurry which was the case for my first one i'd overstretch the image and it was my fault but what they'd used to do is send you a full list then eventually they got round to bolding the example but now not only do they bold the problem for your image, which I feel like this is very, very hard to explain, but they actually include which image is the problem. So, for instance, I didn't realise that my first image was overstretched. I thought that I'd included it at the side that I exported it. I hadn't. I did stretch it out, so it did look quite bad compared to this one I've got now. 
but they actually included in brackets that the main image was a problem i'll put an image up of the message that i got when it was rejected just to make it a bit easier for you to understand but i have to give a round of applause to the ideas team because that is so much easier than trying to find out the problem with your set because half the time i don't even notice which one they've folded and it's definitely an improvement that was really really needed when i get my projects rejected sometimes it's for being too dark like with the blanket fault the images were dark so i had to play around with the lighting on studio for a few days but letting me know which image is the problem and what's wrong with it is such an easy way to keep people posting rather than oh well giving up and stopping submitting their thing so i have left some feedback and i know they've definitely received it and hopefully other people have left similar feedback for other problems they've found and they also get sorted soon but now the moment you've been waiting for if you've made it this far into the video the winner announcement for picture perfect memories now i didn't win i didn't come in the top three i mean four because they chose to select a fourth winner which i am all here for the more winners the merrier i guess i'm not quite sure what they won i don't know if they won a it actually says at the bottom here as i'm looking at it the bonus winner will win the polaroid camera lego idea set which is really cool so i hope they have loads of fun building that and we'll start off with the fourth one because it is this seasonal picture set which first off this cycling through images is really cool i'd love to know how to do that if you do know how to include some sort of it just looks like they've uploaded a gif which i guess does make a bit of sense i might have to try that for my next one if you know how to do this and if it is as simple as uploading a gif do let me know down in the comments below and i thank you for all your comments because we find so much out together especially with the recent brick owl questions that have been asked so let me know any of your questions about ideas also in the comments below if you're unsure about any of these contests but the third place they're sort of runner-up they're not in any specific order but We'll say third place just for the ease of it. We have this Kyoto Garden, which is such a neat and small build. First off, I love these koi pieces that LEGO have released. And I'm definitely, I'm um in an R and getting a few for the little pool in my LEGO City. Because to have some koi in the LEGO City pond would be really cool. I mean, realistically, they're worth too much money to just have wild in the city. But it'd be really cool nonetheless to have some fish look like they're swimming through and... They've used the new corner pieces, which I believe have only been in one set that come out last September, I think. I don't really know because I don't follow up on these miniatures, but it does look really cool. They've actually angled the build itself, which is probably just using some Technic pieces or something on the inside. Or even the hinge pieces that I used in my mock S bar, my giant Star Wars mock. And second place is making a splash this water polaroid there was another one that i thought was really sick with all the water coming out but this one does include a wow which i think is why it got picked over the other one a cool use of pieces to make all the water seem like it's splashing and that effect where it's pouring over the polaroid is really cool but anyway the winner of the polaroid contest is this one the seaside walk I can't say I'm surprised. This is amazing. What they've done is they've created a Polaroid using minifigure scale figures and then created a backdrop. As you can see, we've got the smaller scene here with the Polaroid, which is really cool how they've fixed that angle into that smaller frame. And then they've got a whole background built. It looks like it's actually been made in real life as well, which if it has is really cool. I know a load of people add their own real life backgrounds to studio designs but that just looks like it's actually been built on a desk and if so it'd be amazing to see this in person because you could get the whole 3d effect of the polar i just think it's an amazing design it deserves to win and how they've replicated some smaller lego elements in that larger lego scale and the detail they've also moved across without making it look any different to the micro build is really cool and i'm happy this one won because Really, it did deserve to win. So, of course, stay tuned for the Exploring the Cosmos crowd vote. Once again, I will let you know when that heads into the crowd vote. If not, you can mark your calendars for February 28th and use the link down in the description. Be sure to bookmark it so you don't miss out on all of my other LEGO ideas, as well as checking out all my other links on my link tree in the description. And as always, may the bricks be with you. Mm -hmm.